Problem 13. And I can't, I can't read these numbers, so you guys are just going to have to help me. I'm guessing since every one of these problems, well, I shouldn't say every one because someone just asked you like a question or something. Almost every one, you had to set up a proportion. Somebody match me up two sides, one from the first triangle, one from the second triangle. 10 and 40. Say again. 10 and 40. 10 and 40. Does everybody agree with that? Yeah. 10 and 40. Now remember the second one, we want the variable in there, right? So match up, I don't know, is the variable in the first triangle or the second triangle? Second, so is that X? Yeah. And three. Three, it matches up to three, everybody agree with all that? Yeah. We cross multiply, what do we get going that way? Make sure you got your calculators. What do you get going that way? Now what? Divide by 10. What's x equal? Next question. inch shadow, then how tall is her friend if, at the same time if his shadow is one foot shorter than hers? So we got Madeline, got her shadow, got her friend, got his shadow. So one of the shadow problems, right? Somebody tell me the number so I don't have to read it again. What do we know about Madeline's height? Five foot. Five foot. And her shadow is 84 inches, is that right? Uh, yeah. yeah. Do we know the person's height? No. That's what we're trying to find. That's what we're trying to find. That's X. Do we know the person's shadow? Um, 62 inches. Close. 72 inches. It's a foot less than that, right? So 72 inches. Now, a lot of people get confused on this one because you got feet, you got inches. Normally, I would tell you change them all to one unit or the other. You don't have to. Not in this case, all right? If you're doing this and you match them up, so let's, let's just go ahead. Let's, before I say anything else, let's match them up. What are we taking from the first? Five. 84 on the bottom. If we do it this way, this five is in feet. Both of these are in inches. That's fine as long as the bottom's both the same units and the top's going to both be the same units. It doesn't affect it. So we could change this into inches if we wanted and find the answer in inches, but no reason to. We cross multiply, what do you get going that way? 84x. What do you get going the other way? 360, is that what you said? I don't see a whole lot of you grabbing your calculators and stuff as we're doing this, and that's going to cause me to only do a couple of problems. Everybody better be helping. I don't think they believe me, Owen. Here's your calculator that I gave you. That's not good. Does anybody see one in the pockets, or are they all missing already? Divide both sides by 84, what do you end up with? Uh, um, what is it? No, uh, 30 over 7. So, uh, 4 and 2 sevens. 30 over 7? Yeah. What's that? 4 uh, and 2 sevens? 4 and 2 sevens. Well, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense either, does it? When you're dealing with feet and inches, do we want a fraction like that? You look on a ruler or tape measure or anything, does it have two sevenths on there? No. So what could we do? All right, so what, what you can do if you have something like this and you're dealing with our standard units that aren't 
decimal based. The four here, that's the feet. So write down four feet. The two sevenths is the inches part. So this person's four feet and some inches, but we don't know how many inches. The way we figure that out is you grab your calculator. How do you change from feet to inches? Uh, you got feet to inches? Yep. Divide by, divide by 12. How do you change from inches to feet? Times by 12. Times by 12. So we want to change this. This is in feet. We want to change it to inches. So all we're going to do is take 2 sevenths times 12. Do that on your calculator. Give, give me the, this time I actually want the decimal answer. 3.42. So that's telling us it's about how many inches? 3 inches. So this person is about 4 feet, 3 inches tall. So anytime you want to change when you get an answer like that, take the fraction part or the decimal part, whoever gave me the decimal answer from the beginning, you could have just taken that decimal part, multiplied it by 12, and that would tell you how many inches there are in that part. Next question. No others? Just ready to turn it in? Uh, will you do one of the reading problems now? It's the shortest one. I guess. Number 21. Twenty-one. One overcast day. Private eye, Samantha Diamond needed to calculate the height of a window in a nearby building. Because there was no shadow, uh, shadows cast, she decided to use a mirror like we, like I showed you last time. Sam positioned the mirror on the ground between her, herself and the building. I'm not going to read any more of it. You guys can read the rest of it and tell me. So you got Sam here. You got the mirror. You got the building over here. She's trying to see in that window. Something like that. We got our two triangles and they're similar to each other. Reading through it, what do they tell us? Um, the mirror was 1.22 meters from her face. I think it says from her feet, but that's all right. Yeah. Okay. What else they tell us? And 7.32 meters from the base of the building. Now, is my picture drawn to scale? Does it matter? Nothing. Now what? What else? Did it tell us anything else? Sam's eye was 1.82 meters above the ground. So that's over here, right? And what are we trying to find? How high up the window was. So that's X over there, right? Tell me how to match it up. One point eight two matches up to what? X. X. We'll do that. So this matched up to that. Then what? The only thing that really matters when you're doing this, you start here, you go to there, then you got to start back over here and go to there on the other side. Cross multiply. What do we get going that way? One point two two x equals. What do you get going the other direction? 13.324. Yeah. Now, now this number's on your calculator already, right? Because Kellen's getting ready to say round it off. Don't round it off. It's on your calculator, right? What are we going to do next? Just take that number that's already on your calculator and divide it by 1.22. Before you give me your answer, use some common sense. What did you notice about all of these numbers that they gave us? They went out two places, didn't they? So what should your answer probably do? Two places. Two places. 10.92. What's our units? Uh, meters. 
Is it all right for that window to be 10.92, almost 11 meters off the ground? Yeah. Yeah. About how far is that? About 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30. 34, 35 feet. Somewhere around there, maybe 33, somewhere. Next question. Twenty-eight. A six-foot-tall person is standing near uh, next to a flagpole. The person is casting a shadow one and a half feet in length, while the flagpole casts a shadow five feet in length. How tall is the flagpole? So I got my flagpole. Got my person. Flagpole's got a shadow. Person's got a shadow. It's 28, right? Mm -hmm. What they tell us, so I don't have to keep trying to read those numbers. The shadow is one and a half feet. So that's for the person? Uh, yeah. So if, and if you don't like the one and a half, what could you make that? 1.5. It's all right. Change that one to a decimal. Because it's all nice and even. What else they tell us? Shadow flagpole casting is five feet. Five feet. What else? The person is six foot tall. Six feet here. And then that means the flagpole's got to be what we're looking for, right? Mm -hmm. Tell me how to set it up. What on top? Compares to what? Six feet. Five. 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 It makes sense for the flagpole to be 20 feet tall. Yeah. Next question. that these two parallelograms are similar. What is the length of segment WZ? So I don't have to keep looking at it. Somebody match me up with two sides. Um, two, six. Two, six. two to six. Everybody agree with that? Yeah. And then what's the other pair? Three to X. Three to X. Three to X. That's the side we're looking for, right? If you want two on this one, it might be easier. Will two over six reduce? One thirty. Sometimes if you want to reduce those down to make everything easier on you, then you can. What's one times x give you? X. Three times three? Nine. Did they give us any units on this one? Inches. Inches. Next one. Can't go much longer, Branson. Can't stay awake. 31. 31. What? Thirty-one and triangles. Oh, I'm sorry. If triangles ABE and ABC uh, are similar, what is the value of X? I'm going to separate them off. So we got the small triangle. We got the big triangle, right? So that's A. That's D. That's E. What do we know in this small triangle? Two, 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 three, three, three. The big triangle is A here, C there, and B there. And what do we know in it? Uh, a, uh, B is four. Six. 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 How come six? Because you have to add those two to get that whole thing, right? Twelve for C, D. This is twelve.
well, do we know this side? No, that's what we're trying to figure. No, no, we're, we're trying, trying to figure out things. things. No. We're trying to figure out this, right? Yeah. Do we have enough information? Yeah. Pick me a side in the small triangle. Uh, two. Two. What's it match up to in the other triangle? Six. So two matches up to six. Same as what? X matches up to twelve. Again, we could reduce this two over six down to what? One third. So let's make that a one and a three. Might make it a little easier. Cross multiply, what do you get going that way? Three, right? This way? Twelve. Divide by three, what's x equal? Four. Now, what, part of what we're going to cover today, if we look at those two triangles together like this, there's a theorem that says if these two are parallel, which they are in this case, if they're parallel, then this part matches up to that part, so you don't have to do that adding like we did over here. And this part, the same as this part, matches up to that part. So we could set up a proportion that way. If they match up, are they parallel? Yeah, so then that's why I know that these are parallel because the two triangles are similar. So what we're going to cover today, they're going to tell you that these are parallel. And then from that, we'll know that this triangle is similar, similar to that triangle. Here they told you that so the two triangles were similar, so I know that they are parallel because of that. So we're going to go into proofs then, probably? Yeah, maybe a little bit. Next question. No others? One more. You said? Yeah. 25. Uh, the two pentagons are similar. What is the measure of, what's that say? Angle X. Angle X. So on, what do you know about the angles if the two shapes are similar? They're the same. So somebody tell me, what's the measure of angle X? 60 degrees. Does that say 60? Yeah. So the angles have to be exactly the same. Sides are proportional. Make sure your name's on them. You're going to lay right here on this wooden table right there. Make sure you got the notes. If you didn't grab them, grab them. We'll start filling in what you need to fill in as soon as I get to it. This theorem says the segment connecting the midpoints of two sides of a triangle is parallel to and half the length of the third side. I know it's sort of hard to look at it the way I have it drawn there because I have all three of these mids. These are called mid segments. Those are called mid segments. I have all three of them drawn in there. Uh, and this triangle is actually called the mid segment triangle. Nothing hard about that. But if we just look at any triangle, if I find the midpoint of this side, midpoint of this side, and I connect those two, 
that segment, that mid segment that I'm drawing in there parallel. is parallel to that. And, half the length. and then what that tells us, if the two are parallel, what's that tell us about this small triangle and the big triangle? Similar. They're similar. We talked about that last time, all right? So now we know that this triangle is similar to the big triangle. But what we also know is that this length is half as long as that every single time. So if I told you this was 10, how long would this bottom side be? 20. 20. Does that mean the scale factor is always like 25? Like always, if it's like that? It, or two, depending on which way you're going. So how would the side, oh wait, never mind. Because, no, that makes sense. If I take that one, find the midpoint, take that one, find the midpoint, and I tell you that this side over here is eight, what can you tell me about that mid segment? Four. It's four. It's that simple, all right? Now when I draw all of them in here, one other thing that, uh, that I want you to write down with this, or let's, let's just do something real quick with it. Give me a length for segment BA. Eight. Eight. Six, if it's eight, how long is each of these two parts? Eight, four. Four. So let's write four there, four there. You don't have to write that on your paper, it's just for me. Uh, how long is this segment? Six. six. So if it's six, how long is this part? Three. Three. This part? Three. Give me a length for this one. Ten. Make sure. Can it be ten? Remember, any two sides of a triangle must add up to be more than the third side. Can it be ten? Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, eight plus six is fourteen. So ten will work. So how long is this part? Five. Five. How long is this part? Somebody do me a favor and find the perimeter of a, our entire triangle, the big triangle. 24. 24. Anybody agree with that? Now let's do this. How long is this segment? Uh, five. Five. Everybody agree with that? It's half as long as this, right? Notice it's the same length as the two half segments there, right? How long is this segment? Three. How long is this segment? Three. Four. Which one is it? Four. 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 Oh, I see it now. All right. It's half as long as that whole thing there. Somebody find the perimeter of that small triangle, the mid-segment triangle there. Twelve. For three different angles. Twelve. Everybody agree with that? Five plus three plus four, Terry. Oh, I was doing multiplication. Anybody notice anything about those two perimeters? So the mid-segment triangle is always going to have a perimeter that's half of the big triangle. Fill in what you need to fill in on this. Sort of going back to what we just said a second ago. Be in my class if you want to, so I don't worry. Of course not. I'm just going to be here. I'm just going to be here. Calm down. 
All right, so on this theorem, what this theorem says, this is what I was talking about a minute ago, and I'm going to draw it over here on the side. We did some problems like this, where if these two are parallel, then you know that this triangle is similar to the big triangle. What this theorem says is if these, if these two are parallel, you don't have to separate off the triangles every single time. All right? Sometimes you will still. Uh, like that problem that we just got done doing, you'd have to separate off the triangles. But what this theorem says is that this, and you might want to draw arrows, matches up to that. So that'd be your first ratio, the same as this, matches up to that one. How do you know that length? Well, you're going to have to, same as any of the other problems, we're going to have to know three lengths, and then you're going to be finding the fourth length. So you're going to set up a proportion every time. Something like that. So if we figured out that maybe this is two, this is four, uh, let's make it something else. Uh, this is five, let's say. This part over here is three. And this part we don't know. Then what proportion would we set up? Uh, two. Two matches up to what? Three. Three. The five. same as what? Five. Five matches up to x. We set up that proportion and we cross multiply and solve and it's going to tell us that length right there. Now what Ethan has to worry about, once you find that length, sometimes the question will ask you something stupid like, it won't ask you the length of segment AE, it might ask you the length of segment AC. Well once you find x here, what are you going to do to find AC? Add three. Add three, Add three to it. All right. So make sure you read the question carefully. So this part matches up to that part, the same as this part matches up to that part. If the picture looks like this with the parallel lines in it. Nothing really hard about that theorem, it's just sometimes it makes it easier, sometimes it doesn't. The problem that we just got done doing, we were looking for this length, and they told us this length here, whatever it was, well then it will, this won't work on that. Because if we're dealing with these, we don't know anything about these in this theorem. It has to be these two parts and these two parts. So if we're looking at this, tell me how we could what proportion we'd set up on this example. X is the four as nine is the six. Does everybody agree with that? Write that there on your paper. I think this is one of the problems on the paper, isn't it? We cross multiply. Cross multiply this way, what do you get? 6x. Now the other one. 36. 36. Divide by 6. What's x end up being? So that part right there is 6. How long is segment RU? 15. Now again, if they would have said, you know, find this length, then we'd have to use this small triangle and match it up to the big triangle. We couldn't use that theorem that we just covered. Next one, match up stuff in this one for me. X to 35. What is it? 36 to 44. Now, I don't know what these are off the top of my head, cross multiplying and stuff here, so before we do that, grab your calculator and do this. Will 36 over 44 reduce? Uh, yeah, 9, 9, 11. 9 over 11. So we could put, ignore that, 9 over 11, x over 35. Does that make the multiplying and the dividing a little easier? Yeah. So you get 11x equals, somebody do the multiplying this way, 35 times 9. 350? Uh, I got 315. 315. Anybody else get that? Because I heard different answers. 9 by 35. Yeah. Yep. 315. Yeah. Now what do we do? 5 by 11. What's that sequence? 42 and 7 9. Does everybody agree with that? Did it come out 42.7777? 7778. You got something different. Yeah. 
Anybody get anything different than that? 315 divided by 11? What is, what's the whole number part? 28 point something, right? Yeah. Now, again, if you, if you go onto your calculator and I'm trying to think on each calculator how it is. If Jacob goes on his calculator and goes to the math button, I think he can go to fraction and hit equals and it'll change it to a fraction. On the small calculators, look at the small calculators. On the small calculators, most of them I think has a button that looks like this. F D. Anybody find that on their calculator? Yeah. So if you've got your answer, that crazy decimal in there, and you hit the FD button, then hit equals, it'll change it from a decimal to a fraction for you. All right? Again, on your calculator, Caitlin, if you got this decimal answer in there, whatever it was, you hit the math button, fraction, hit equals, it'll give it to you as a fraction. Anybody come up with a fraction? So you got 28 and 7 over 11? Yeah. Now, a lot of the calculators will do this. Some of the big ones, they just leave it as an improper fraction. That's not really the greatest way to leave this one. So if it was something like that, and I knew your calculator wasn't going to help you out, I'd probably accept the 28 point whatever, round the decimal off to a couple places. Fill in what you need to fill in on this. Converse. Anybody remember what converse is? So it switches it around, right? So this one says, instead of saying, if these are parallel, then these are pro proportional. This is what we were talking about earlier. And it says, if these are proportional, then what's true about the two lines? They're parallel. the examples. Yeah. So what they're saying here is if that matches up to that the same as this matches up to that, then what has to be true about these two? They have to be parallel to each other. So on this example, let's see if this works out. See if these two are parallel or not. Tell me how to match up the first ratio. What to what? Ninety to seventy-two. Everybody agree with that? That matches up to that. Fifty to forty. Now, all you got to do is to see if these match up or not is cross multiply. Do both cross multiplies. Do ninety times the forty, seventy-two times the fifty. Yeah. And what happens? Do they come out to the same number? Yes. No. Maybe. So what's that tell us about these two lines? They're parallel. They're parallel. So it's just the converse. When might you ever need to know out in the real world if two things are parallel or not? Like train tracks or something? All right, something like that. You want them to be straight lines? Right, you want all lines are straight. You know what I mean? Like you want them to be parallel to each other, so you might need to figure out something like that. If you're building a house, Guess what has to be true about the back of the house and the front of the house? They have to be parallel to each other so that the house doesn't fall. You think to fill in on that? Fill in this one. On this one, I only drew three parallel lines here. We could add five, six, seven 
other lines, whatever. Anytime we have these parallel lines, if all of them are parallel, then this part's going to match up to that part the same as that part matches up to that part, same as that part matches to that one, same as that one matches to that one, all the way for any of them. Say it again. On board, there's supposed to be a line about the index, right? No, yeah, my fault. Uh, Forgot my symbol. Uh, Thank you, Michael. Take points off my next test, all right. Remind me if I take points off of yours, say, hey, you forgot that once, give me a break this time. So, on this, usually, if you look around the U.S., what's usually true about streets that run east and west? They're parallel. All right, now. What ends up happening, if you look at the little plaques and stuff, as a town like Eaton or New Paris or El Rain or whatever, as they build extra little plaques, do the roads always end up being parallel to each other? No, no but I about guarantee you that when the town started, it probably looked something like that. All right, but then you add other stuff in there, and then this road goes like, cross from that road to that road and then another road from here goes like over to that road and stuff like that and it ends up not being parallel. But that's what this is. So on this, we got the 120 right here. I'm going to start with 120. That's this segment. I'm going to put it on top. What's it match up to? 150. 150. So this matches up to that. We're looking for GH, which is right here, so I'm going to put an X there. What's that X match up to? 300. Now, I probably don't want to multiply these out this way. What can you do with those zeros there? Cancel them out, get rid of them. Make the multiplying and the numbers a little simpler. Could we reduce it down farther if you wanted? Four fifths. Four fifths, anybody agree with that? Yeah. Now, when we cross multiply, what do you get going that direction? 5x. 5x, that's pretty easy. What do you get when you go the other way? 1,200. Now what do you have to do? Divide by 5. 240. 600. 600 divided by 2. 1,200 divided by 5. 1,200 divided by 5, that's what you guys told me. 240, is that what we're going with? Yeah. 241 uh, yards. yards. Now stick it in here, if you stick it back in there, 240. Does that make sense? Yeah. Which which part should be longer? This part or something going down diagonal like this? The diagonal. The diagonal should be a little longer, right? So it makes sense that this is 240 and this is 300. Next one, tell me how to match this up. We're looking for BD, which is right there. What? X to 16. X to 16. That's, uh, 40s to 30. Be careful. Right. X is to 16. Oh, yeah, that's 30 to 40. we got to go backwards this way, right? So 30 is to 40. Could you reduce that 30 over 40? Yeah. Uh, yeah. To what? 3 over 4. 3 over 4. Might make the multiplying a little easier. Multiply this way, what do you get? Uh, or this uh, way first. 4x. 4x equals 48. 48. What's x equal? 12. And they didn't give us any units this time, so just 12. Anything real difficult so far, Owen? <laughs> Ethan. Sorry. Mr. Owen. Yeah, we don't need to call them Ethan Owen anymore. 
Make sure you're keeping your binder caught up. Should be an easy grade. No, none of you in here need this fourth quarter grade to hey, you forgot your symbols. help you out for a while. I didn't feel like putting them that time. When, when you're setting up these proportions and stuff, yeah. the symbols don't actually have to be in there because we know that they have to be segments. So on that last one. We're in, al we're in algebraic form. Right, so that we don't need the symbols. You might want to write this down at the top somewhere, an altitude. Altitude. We talked about it, but just to make sure you understand it, an altitude. If you draw a triangle, an altitude goes from one corner to the opposite side and forms a right angle. It's the height. So that's an altitude. Altitude and height, basically the same thing when you're dealing with the triangles. So all this theorem says, the two, if the two triangles are similar, so if they tell you the two triangles are similar, and you know this side is 10 and this side is 8, just making up numbers here, and we know this altitude is 7, then we can find this altitude. So 10 is going to match up to 8 the same as what? 7 matches up to x. So it's just setting up a proportion again is all. <laughs> angle bisector theorem. What's an angle bisector? Um, a line that splits an angle into two congruent angles. All right, splits, splits an angle into two congruent angles. As angles. Yeah. So if you have in a triangle, if you have one of the angles being bisected, then we can set this up. And I'll give you a second to fill that in before I start explaining. It's just different. So this time, how many triangles do we have in this picture, first of all? Three. Three. Those three triangles are not similar to each other. All right, so everything else we've done, the triangles have been similar. These triangles are not similar. But what happens is whenever you have this, this side is going to match up to that side the same as this part matches up to that part every single time. All right, so it's bisecting the angle, but is it bisecting the side? No, not for sure. So if I have some triangle and I bisect this angle, we know those two are congruent to each other. Uh, we'll call this N, this T, this H, this S. This matches up to that. So N matches up to T the same as S matches up to H. Or Ethan up here doesn't like doing it that way. He wants to go this route. So N matches up to S the same as what? T matches to H. Either one of those setups will work. Mm -hmm. If you have an angle bisector. Down here at the bottom I wrote it out. Side of part one on top of the first one and the part that it's adjacent to of this side adjacent what's adjacent mean again uh, it like right next to hook to neighbors. right so neighbors so this matches up to that the same as this matches up to that not really hard about it uh, that only works if you are bisecting an angle So on this first one, make this one tough. Pick me a part. How could we match this up? Um, could you say um, seven to fifteen? That'll work. 
So seven, or 13, not 13. 13. I can't read. Seven matches up to 13. Now here's where you gotta be careful. Where's the X gonna go, top or bottom? Bottom. Bottom. What's gonna go on top? Because we don't know this part. Uh, y. How long is the whole thing? 15. 15. Do we want to put a Y up here? No. Because then we got two variables in there. How long, is, if I told you that this part right here was two, how long would this part be? 13. 13. If I told you this part was four, how long would this part be? If I so told you this X, part. X minus, or 15 minus X. There you go. So we can write it in that way. Put parentheses around that. Go ahead and write that down on your paper. Made it a little tougher. It's not really any harder, but it's hard to set up sometimes. Somebody cross multiply for me this way. 7x. 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 When you're multiplying the other way, please, again, take your time and write it down before you try to distribute out in your head. What's 13 times 15 give you? 195. 195. Anybody agree with that? Yeah. What's 13 times a negative x give you? 13 uh, x. Now what are we going to do? We're going to add 13. Add 13x to both sides. Just solving the equation. How many x's do we have? 20. 20x equals 195. Then what? 9x is 9.75. Is it all right to just give x as 9.75? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it only went out a couple places. That's a pretty good answer. Does it make sense for x to be 9.75? Yeah. yeah. What do you know? x has to be less than what? 15. 15, because the whole thing's 15. Could we find this part from q to r if we wanted? Yeah. Yeah. It's 5.25. Next one. Made this one a little tougher, too. Put that square root in there. We talked about this the other day. This is an exact answer instead of a rounded off answer. Somebody tell me how you would match them up here. Uh, four is the square root four, or four square root two. Four times square root two, this part? Two, four. Matches up to four. The and same as what? Y does the four. So Y does the four, everybody agree with that? When we cross multiply here, what's that give you going that way? Four Y. Or y. Now watch, don't make this harder than it is. When you cross multiply that way, all we gotta do is multiply. All we gotta do is multiply the outside numbers. What's four times four give you? Sixteen. So you got sixteen times the square root of two. Alright? Luke, don't let this confuse you. Just sort of ignore that square root of 2 there because we're doing the same thing, exact same way. Divide both sides by 4. These cancel out. What's y equal? Uh, What's 16 yeah, divided by 4? 4. 4 times the square root of 2. That's your answer. Wait. Can you yes, just leave it that way. Problem. So if these two are the same, what Kellen's getting ready to say, if these two are the same, what has to be true about these two? They have to be the same. Altitude drawn to a hypotenuse. Fill in what you need to fill in on this one. Where is there a hypotenuse located? Um, in what kind of triangle? A right. a right triangle. So what this is saying, anytime you have a right triangle, we talked about this the other day, anytime you have a right triangle and you draw an altitude from the right angle to the hypotenuse, Three triangles are formed, and all three of those triangles are similar to each other. Is he asleep? I don't care. I'm sure. He was asleep earlier, and I was trying to get your attention, so he woke up and smacked on his desk, and he was like, ah. I don't do that crap anymore. Uh, if you want to sleep in here, that means it's quieter for me. Um, Some of them, Kellen, need to make sure that they're not sleeping because. Uh, a geometric mean. Fill in what you need to fill in on this. Geometric mean. When you learned about means in the past, you learned mean, median, and mode. And they always said the mean was the average 
That's a bunch of junk. The mean is not, mean is an average, but there's many, many different kinds of averages in math. All right, so your fifth grade or sixth grade teacher, when they taught you about mean, median, and mode, and they said the mean is the average. And that's true, mean is an average, but that's not the way it works. A geometric mean is another kind of average in math. When you're doing a geometric mean, make sure, do me a favor, and circle this or something, star it, something. When you're doing the geometric mean, these two numbers or these two positions are always going to be the same thing. So it's going to look something like this. 7 compares to 5, the same as, and we'll put x over here. What has to go here? These two have to be the same when you're using a geometric mean. All right? And on this, if we were to do it, we cross multiply and you end up with 7x equals 25 and so on and so on. The other thing that could happen, and I don't know why I just do that, ignore this. If we say 7 compares to x, the same as. What's going to have to go on top over here? X compares to 10. I don't know, just making up a number. When we cross multiply here, watch this because this is where it's going to be a little different. You've got to remember some of your algebra. When you cross multiply here, what's X times X give you? 2X. What is it? X squared. And then going the other way is 70. And then what are you going to have to do to solve for that? Take the square root of it. All right? Geometric mean. In the, whenever you're setting up, if you know something's the geometric mean, that means this, the second position, and the third position have to be the same numbers. Yeah, the, this you could, you could leave that as square root of 70. I don't think that'll break down any. Four won't go into 70 evenly. Uh, Ten and seven is about it, isn't it? Yeah. 35 and two. So square root of 70 would be a fine answer there. Fill in what you need to fill in on this. Pay particularly close attention to this right here. This tells you exactly how to set it up. Don't make these harder than they are, just like with the problems that we did last time where you had person's height compared to tree's height, person's shadow compared to a tree's shadow. I'm putting it in words for you right there to try to make it as easy as possible. So this says the altitude is the geometric mean between the two parts of the hypotenuse. Notice when you have an altitude drawn over here, it splits that hypotenuse up into two parts, not two equal parts, just two separate parts. And what this says is the altitude, that length right there, whatever it is, here it's just A, has to be the same in that location and that location. And then the two parts go in the other two locations. So if I drew some right triangle, look like this, that's a right angle. We draw that, that's our altitude. Somebody give me a length for the altitude. How long do you think that is? Five. Five. If that's five, and we know that this part here is three, and this part is six, let's say. And all we do is we set up this proportion. The 5 has to go here and here. What goes here? 3 and what goes here? 
six, and then one of those is going to have to be a variable. I don't know why I put two numbers in there. So one of them has to be a variable, and then you can cross multiply and solve doing that. So altitude goes in the geometric mean locations, second and third, and then these two parts, whatever two parts that altitude or that hypotenuse is being split into goes one on top, one on bottom. That one's pretty easy. The leg theorem, which is next, a little tougher. So the geometric mean for the leg. Again, pay close attention to how it's written in words down here. That's if you can do that, that's going to make it easier. You don't need to write any of this down. You don't need to write any of this down. You don't need to write any of this down. You don't need to write I'm trying to figure out how I can. You don't need to write any of this down. You don't need to write any of this down. No, I'm trying to figure out how I You don't I need to write any of this down. Yeah, hey, I think you should write it down, Brandon. I'm working on it. Brandon, write it down. <laughs> I'm serious. I wrote the last one. So I'll answer his question there. Right? Just tell me. All right, on this. Again, if we have a right triangle, you have to start off, it has to be a right triangle. You draw an altitude in that right triangle, so it goes across, forms a right angle with the hypotenuse. Here's where you got to be careful. The other one was pretty easy because it's just. The altitude goes in two of the spots, and then you got your two parts there. That's pretty straightforward. This one's a little tougher when you're dealing with one of the legs of the right triangle, the original triangle. This time, whichever leg you're dealing with, let's say we're dealing with this leg, that's the geometric mean. So it goes here, it goes there. Those two numbers have to be the same. Then what happens if I'm dealing with that one certain leg, and I'm going to write N and T right here for those two links. If I'm dealing with that leg, this top part right here has to be the part of the hypotenuse that's adjacent to that leg. Which part of the hypotenuse, N or T, is adjacent to this leg? T. T. So T goes here. Then the other one here has to be the entire hypotenuse, that whole thing. So this time it's N plus T. So it's got to be the part that's hooked to the leg that you're dealing with. Oh, and then the other one has to be the whole hypotenuse. So let's do this example real quick. What do you want to find first, x, y, or z? Well, x. Y? I heard y. That's what we'll look at. Y is what in the original right triangle? A leg. So in other words, we're going to do this. Leg, leg, part, of the hypotenuse, the part that's hooked to that leg, over the whole hypotenuse. Do we know the part that's hooked to the yeah. leg that we're dealing with? 17, is that right? How do you come up with 17? All right, so 25 minus 8 gives you 17. So part, that's 17. Do we know the leg? No, so that's just Y. What goes in this top part over here? Y. 
Y then? Over 25. Over the whole hypotenuse, which is 25. That'd be Y squared. Now we cross multiply. Y times Y is Y squared. Help me out this way. 425. Anybody else get that? Yes, no, maybe? Yeah. Take the square root of both sides. Tell you what, just give me the decimal answer this time. So we'll just say 20.6. Is that close enough for everybody? Mm -hmm. So how long is that leg right there? 20.6. 20 20.6. What do we want to find next? X. X is a what? A leg. A leg. So when we set this up, X goes here, X goes here. Uh, A is the adjacent. Eight's the part that's hooked to it. 25 is still the other part. 25 the other way. We cross multiply. What do you get going that way? X. X squared. How about that one? 200. 200. Now what? X square root. 14.1. So how long is this leg? 14.1. Now, could you have found that leg by using Pythagorean's theorem? Probably. Pythagorean's theorem would go this way. It'd be x squared plus 20.6 squared equals 25 squared, right? Yes. Figure that out real quick and see what x is. Just grab your calculator and figure it out real quick. 14.2. So pretty close to what we have. Yeah, real close. What's the last thing we're going to find then? Uh, the altitude. The altitude. So we have to go back to that altitude theorem. Remember, the altitude is the geometric mean for the two parts, right? So if z goes here, what goes here? And then what goes here? Uh, 8. 8. What goes here? 17. 17. We cross multiply. What's z times z? Cross multiply that way, what do you end up with? 136. 136. Yeah. Take the square root. 11.7. Now let's go back and make sure all our answers make sense. How long was the hypotenuse in this? 25. 25. If it's 25, what should be true about all three of these links that we just found? It should. This should be smaller than 25. Are all of them smaller than 25? And then another thing that we could check is in our triangles, any two sides should add up to be more than the third side. What's 8 plus 11.7? What's 8 plus 11? Is that more than this side? What's 17 plus 11? 28. Is that more than this side? Now for the big triangle, what's 14 plus 20? 34, is that bigger than the 25? Yep. So it seems like it makes sense. On these, first thing, we're only going to do like one of these, maybe two of them. We'll see. First thing, put parentheses around those. When we cross multiply, Caitlin, it might get out of the way enough that you can see every now and then. Going this way, we got 2x times x minus 3. Going the other way, we got 3x times x plus 3. Ignore that stray mark going up through there. So 2x squared. We multiply, we distribute here, so that's 2x squared. What do you get doing that? Uh, so 2x squared minus 6x. Minus 6x. Equals... 3x squared plus 6x? Plus 9x. Plus 9x, right? And then you can uh, subtract the x squareds. Subtract the x squareds? Subtract the 2x squareds. So minus 2x squared on both sides. Minus 2x squared. x squared. That ends up being negative 6x on this side. And just x squared plus 9x on that side, right? Subtract um, 9x. Subtract 9x. Negative 15x. Now, before we do that, 
Is it going to come out to where the X's cancel out? No. Uh, so we're going to have to factor this or use quadratic formula again. So instead of moving the 9X over to here, I'm going to move the 6X over to there. Zero it out. So we have zero on this side. What's left on that side now? Uh, zero. X squared plus 15X. 15X. Now this is a little easier factoring, and hopefully you remember some of this from last year. When you go to factor this, since it doesn't have a regular number out here, you can take an X out. Find the greatest common factor. If you take an X out of there, what's left? Uh, 15. Uh, X, plus just 15. X. X plus 15. X plus 15. When, once you have that, that's in the factored form. All right, and that's factored. All you got to do now, these two things multiplied together equals zero. So either that equals zero or that equals zero. So X could be zero. So either X equals zero or X plus 15 equals zero. Sorry, my writing here is terrible. So one of our answers is X equals what? Zero. Zero. What's going to make this one zero? Negative 15. Those are our two answers. Is it always going to work out nice and easy that, like that? No. There's going to be times where the x squareds will actually cancel each other out. Then all you got to do is solve the rest of it like a normal equation. So just because you see something that's got an x squared in it, does that mean you just give up and quit on it? No. Sometimes it'll even come out, it'll come out easier even though it's got that x squared in it. Your assignment says pack it. Okay. 